So today I want to talk about an interesting topic, how would artificial intelligence change the face of young India and essentially cha change the face by teaching? How will it transform? So before we get into that, what is artificial intelligence? I mean, a lot of you are hearing this buzzword. Um, for many of you, it might just be a simple movie of you know Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that. So thinking of um, those things when you think of artificial intelligence. But I think many of you are using email, almost all of you, right? Or many of you are on social media. Many of you have flown, right? There'll be hardly anyone who's not caught a flight. A plane is not entirely driven by a pilot since ages, right? So in fact, most of the role of a pilot is in takeoff and landing. You are leaving your fate to artificial intelligence for several years without knowing it. So artificial intelligence is part of uh, everyday life now. It's not a future that we are talking of, right? It's so, but it has a great capacity. It is the fourth industrial revolution which has already started. I believe it has bigger transformative ability than was the discovery to have controlled fire. It has definitely bigger implication than the industrial revolution. So in artificial intelligence, the basic difference between normal computing and artificial intelligence is that you're not programming exact code. You're not giving uh, the algorithm a clear solution. This is how you solve a problem, right? So they, you're basically providing an architecture from which the algorithm can learn, the artificial intelligence can learn. Artificial intelligence can, by and large, has been learning through experiences. It's been learning through human data sets. In fact, when you hear of racist, biased chatbots, they're not biased because artificial intelligence is screwed, it's because the data set that they see, right? When they put to interact with humans, they see that's how humans interact. So they're learning that. It's like, is a kid bad or is a kid just a manifestation of how parents are? So when AI is performing poorly, well, it could be in some cases that the AI has not been designed well, but in other cases, it is that AI is learning from human data sets which are inherently biased. But AI is also learning, not just from data sets. In fact, it's possible to have a wonderful society ahead with rule-based learning in AI. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time discussing how we can make AI better. That's for a separate talk altogether. But can artificial intelligence transform India? So let's look at what India has. I mean, we have enormous population, right? Uh, certain politicians, at least definitely for politicians, it's a boon. Votes keep coming, people are not very educated, people, uh, large majority is poor. Uh, but by and large, the discussion around population has been in negative terms, right? It's not really considered a blessing. Can we transform that population in some way, at least to be a blessing for a short time? In the long run, I'm obviously telling my opinion, people can disagree with it. I definitely don't think we should even have 1 20th of the population that we have because we are killing our planet. But that's sort of my worldview. It may not be the worldview which is sort of amenable to somebody wanting to make a lot of profit. Um, but what we have essentially are classrooms filled with a lot of students. What are we producing? Now, you may say, what are the heights of top institutions in India? I'll not name names, and I'll not name names about poor institutions either. But even from top institutions, are we really producing a lot of Steve Jobs? Are we really producing a lot of Bill Gates? The answer is clearly no. Um, from smaller institutions, we are even barely producing hireable people. People graduate, students graduate after their bachelor's or master's and in the current day and age. People are even just getting 20,000 to 50,000 rupees monthly salary. It's very difficult to sustain. So engineering, which used to have a charm, doesn't necessarily have a charm. But what about other population? I'm not here just simply to talk about how we can make engineering better. So do you think artificial intelligence, this thing which is coming to steal your jobs, right? People who are doing this 20,000 rupee small job, they'll not even be able to make 20,000. And in India, unlike Norway, unlike Sweden, may not be in a position to have universal basic income, right? We are not a small, homogeneous, highly developed country that everyone can be provided basic living wage without working. So when people are out of work, what will happen? Now that's a whole new discussion altogether. That's why I'm saying in the long run, both from ecological perspective and also from the need-based perspective, humans are no longer required for small things. For example, 
Horses are a luxury now. Horses are not required, right? But we measure things like in horsepower. Why? Because horses were required before we had industrial revolution. Similarly, most of routine, repetitive work that is done by humans would become obsolete. So we are clearly heading for a future where we will not have uncreative human jobs. Humans would be required for what they're best at. And if you don't remember too many things from this talk, you should at least remember this one thing, that what we are really good at. As humans, we are really bad at repetitive things. We are not very disciplined. And I'm probably less disciplined than anyone else in the room. I get bored very soon. My mother is in the audience. She can tell that I could barely finish my homeworks or anything. So anything which is not creative, I can never do those things. So humans are really poor at repetitive tasks and accuracy. We make errors. What we're really good at, creativity. AI is nowhere close to that. Whatever we are thinking of even the best cases of cross-modal uh, thinking in AI is at least hundreds of years away. If not hundreds, at least 30, 40 years away from where humans are. It might even be forever away. So what is a society that will be really beneficial? The future lies in humans working with AI. Not AI replacing humans, but also us reaching a sustainable population level. But while we are having this kind of a large population, what can AI do? So what, is, what can AI do in specific Indian context? So I had a luxury in the beginning of going to a very interesting school, Shivni Ketan, which I liked because there were 10, 12 students for each teacher. There were no uniforms and all that. After that, I was put in a supposedly uh, premier school because the fees was high and uh, all the kids used to go there. And I hated that school. I still have the desire one, one day to go and set it on fire. That's how much I hate it. It's been ages since I left that high school. So, but in that place, uh, you had teachers who had no idea what your capabilities are, right? What your weaknesses are, because every teacher is teaching a class of 40 to 50 students. So what can AI do in a human context, especially of India? Imagine one simple thing. You have a simple cell phone camera, all of you are carrying smartphones. In the morning, it takes a simple click. You don't have to call out roll numbers, right? You don't have to call out names. You know who's present in the class. Can you do facial recognition? Not just facial recognition, can you do emotional recognition? So you know how a student is responding. Is the student really understanding what is being taught? So the teacher, who's really occupied with few troublemakers or few of her or his favorites, knows what everyone in the class is doing. So AI can become a very important teacher's aid. The kind of aid which is, becomes especially important in an Indian context where there's large population, not enough teaching resources, right? Where personal teaching is not possible. But imagine what it can even do in future. Can AI be your personal mentor for life? Because at least I believe education doesn't stop at your college. I'm definitely studying more hours in my life now than I ever did in my college time or master's times or even PhD times. So education is something, if you are really competitive, you are learning something till the day you die. So can you actually have a mentor which is picking out your weaknesses? Right now, you have dating apps which might suggest to you your appropriate partners. You have advertisements which are geared towards you, but you don't have educational material geared towards your weaknesses, right? Can we use AI for something better? In a country like India, we have the advantage of very large data set. Where AI performs optimally is when it gets large data set. And AI can fundamentally help India a lot. But if I start talking of all the details of how AI can transform India and what are the technical details, what is the investment required, what is the technology, that'll be a whole different TEDx talk. So I'll get back after a lot of meandering of what is AI and uh, how AI can help in specific Indian context. I'll get to really how AI teaching can help India. Yeah. So first of all, let me talk of benefits of AI education, okay? So it's not just that you want to be a better engineer, right? So you need to learn AI. If you're a lawyer, right? You're studying law or you're already a practicing lawyer, let's say, in high court. You want to ha retrieve some information on a particular case. Having a manual assistant who has a limited memory is not a great idea. Having an AI which can retrieve every single case for you so you can beat your opponent. In fact, your ability partly to beat your opponent would rely on your education, your skills to argue the case, but other would be whether you have a better version of AI than your opponent lawyer or not. So AI is going to permeate everything. 
Now you have AI-guided surgeries, right? So robots are performing certain surgeries at a better level than doctors could ever perform. Uh, I hope one day, in fact, that is one of a, used to be one of my pet projects of single cell surgery. It hasn't taken off so far. It might happen next year when I probably move back to North America. Uh, is can you do that precision at a single cell level, not even at an organ or tissue level? Can you have such microsurgery? And uh, that is something that AI can help you with. So essentially, when you have AI permeating all walks of life, right? Essentially, whether they are from your law profession, whether from physician profession, I have two students working with me on what we would sort of broadly say, Clean India Project or Swachh Bharat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, essentially, the idea is it can be applied to any country in the world. Can you sort out, instead of manually sorting, can you even sort out plastic garbage from organic garbage by just having a camera and a shuffler? So it can re uh, re reduce a lot of manual labor. So AI has applications everywhere. So AI education obviously would have a uh, lot of implications for every walk of life. But let's start with one thing. By teaching, let's say, a lawyer AI, by teaching a physician AI, you're helping in the profession for sure, right? I hope I've already convinced you that you need to learn AI if you want to be competitive. Otherwise, you'll be out, you'll be absolute, you'll be dinosaurs, right? You'll go extinct in the next 20 years if you're not keeping pace with at least using AI. I'm not necessarily saying you need to know how to design AI. You need to at least learn how to use AI. And that gets to an important issue because you're using Facebook, you're using Gmail, not all of you program. So you can use AI without being able to program, and that is an important step. But can AI do something to a country like India where we still fight about what is the religious background, what is the caste, what are all things? So when you study AI, what it teaches you is you need large data sets. Biases are learned, right? Biases are not intrinsic to the system. You learn how to solve problems. Can it develop even a scientific temperament, what a basic science education would do? So you may not be calling something a BSc. Somebody might be studying BCom. Somebody might be a high school student. But they're learning as a scientist, right? Every person becomes a scientist, a citizen scientist, in the process of learning artificial intelligence, in the process of solving problems. And they think in better ways than most of us are thinking right now about where somebody was born, what, which language they speak, right? What is their surname? All those things. So I think there's one intangible benefit also of teaching AI in a country like India or any old civilization. It's not just an India-only problem. You look across Asia, you look across Africa, most of the older cultures are hung up on identity issues, and this is one of the interesting tools to sort of break it. But uh, the next thing, essentially, beyond uh, these intangible benefits, is can AI teaching make you a better person at whatever you're doing? I hope I already talked about a few cases of a lawyer, of a physician, right? Or of even a garbage sorter. I hope it can even make you a better prime minister one day, right? I hope it can make a better uh, bureaucrat because I hope everyone gets access to policies, right? All the information. It doesn't matter who, let's say, is leading India or Pakistan or China for that matter. This, whatever I'm talking is in, independent of the context of any country. But if they get access to information, which region is facing more drought? which region is uh, needing immediate intervention, let us say in terms of police force, let us think of, let us say, uh, rape statistics in Delhi, right? Where do you want to deploy policemen, well-behaved policemen, sorting out even the bad apples out of them, and well-behaved policemen to make Delhi a city like New York, a Delhi a city like Mumbai even. Mumbai is a safer city for women than uh, Delhi is. So can you use AI, can you use big data to make better cities? And for that, this could help, uh, let's say, a local chief minister, right? Not necessarily a prime minister. So policy making can happen at different levels. So where AI can help is at that level. So it can make everyone a better person at what they are. So I think AI teaching is independent. Now let us ask what kind of AI teaching. I would say fundamentally two kinds, but I'm a bit afraid. I hope the younger generation, which are the students of this college, prove me wrong. What happens in India, we are good in terms of learning to use technology, but we don't create Steve Jobs from India. So we don't develop people who are creating new technology here. So that might also happen with AI. That Indians, being tech savvy, being ready to aspire to a better paying job, might learn to do the low end AI, that is adopt uh, some parts of AI and use it for doing their job better, but they may not learn how to make better AI themselves. This is a problem I'm facing. I hope that'll get uh, 
that'll be over soon because most of the students I get are interested in applying AI to solving some interesting problem. Like I have students working on applying it to fMRI data sets, figuring out whether the person has certain autistic features early on, whether the person had some minor strokes or not. So instead of manual detection, we have people willing to do that. When I talk of that I have these crazy ideas and we can redesign AI entirely, can we design AI which is 20 years ahead of the time? I get only four or five hands compared to four to 5,000 hands to apply it. So I already get less people and they tend to drop out. So I hope the second part, I end up being wrong, but that is another part. So AI education is going to be in two parts. One is being able to use AI. Second is uh, being able to apply, uh, develop it yourself. But if you're not able to develop it, at least using it is very important. Uh, last but not least, essentially, what would this take? I think, if you think of the educational institutions in India, they again are troubled by mass production. So we need better institutions. What I'm trying to do myself, that is sort of my mission, I hope a lot of people join in that mission, is I'm trying to collaborate with top companies in Silicon Valley and top companies in Montreal, top companies in Toronto and Vancouver, trying to bring them here and actually have one simple paradigm of education, which is based on project. See, I also paint, if I teach you that you make pen strokes like this, it won't make you a painter unless you work on a project. Similarly, if I tell you, you cut these things, you see a few videos, and you'll not become a master chef yourself, you have to work on a project. What is missing in India is an education which is based on solving a real world problem. And real world problems cannot be solved in a lab practical, just few weeks. It cannot even be solved in a six months namesake projects. I get a bunch of these jokes, right? These namesake projects where people want to do masters. These are literally jokes. I mean, I don't have any respectful words for them. They're not solving any new problem. They are copy-paste jobs of changing one thing to another and submitting something to just to get an A plus in their universities. And I'm not talking of top, uh, small places. I'm talking of topmost engineering colleges from India. These are the kind of projects people keep submitting to me that whether they can do masters with me. So this is not how you solve problems. So an entirely re envisioned bachelor's, master's, PhD programs, or even high school programs, where people say, okay, this is my neighborhood. I have this crime problem. Can I redesign something? I have this problem of roads in Delhi. Instead of laying, I don't have budget. Government of Delhi or government of India doesn't have budget to lay double the number of roads, but it needs to halve the traffic. Can we apply better graph theory? Can we apply better AI to solve this problem? Imagine if those kind of projects we were doing, we would be making a better country. I hope you all join me in a thought, and I hope I'm successful in creating such an educational institution. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.